to uh, give a brief update on the dogs. Come on, get down, guys. They're uh, doing great. I've actually been remarkably pleased. I gotta put my glove back on. It is about negative 10 with the wind chill right now. And uh, the sheep are all doing fine. The dogs are doing their thing. I do need to get the collar off of her. The, the battery on these GPS collars doesn't seem to last very long in the cold. And then the cows cannot be bothered one lick. So this accident that happened upon me, I guess it's uh, my instinct was to fight it, you know, and say, let's put them back where I want them. They should do what I want instead of just letting them, you know, be true to their nature, I guess. And uh, I'm glad I resisted that urge because these dogs are doing a great job, aren't you, Bob? He's very friendly. You a good boy? And negative 10 doesn't seem to bother them at all. The animals are just kind of out waiting for their meal, I guess. And boy, they... They cleaned up yesterday's meal pretty good. There's there's not very much residue. That's all right here. So we're going to feed them a little bit extra today. Anytime it's below zero, I try to feed a little extra. So they have plenty to eat and, you know, calories to burn. But those sheep are ready to rock and roll. And uh, they are well protected by all these dogs. All right. I am sick of the cold. Boy, I think they were ready to eat. I don't know if you can see exactly how close I am. I'm kind of very interested in the change in their demeanor and relationship with me when it comes to winter feeding versus summer moving. Because I can just get in and among them. And they, you can tell they tolerate me. They'd prefer me to be off a little ways, but I'm, look at, all right, so, it, they, they just instinctively understand the change in relationship during the, uh, during the winter, that they are totally dependent on me for food. There, glove back on. Boy, I can't have my glove off for more than 10 seconds uh, it's bitterly cold I mean you can kind of get the idea just looking at the sky and the trees the fact that when it snowed last it's so cold that the trees didn't uh, shed their snow at all it's beautiful it really is but it's very cold yeah I'm, uh, I gotta give them a little more hay yet. This is about half of what they get. But I wanted to stop and take a break. They found something good over here. Yeah, they're all going for the same thing. Whatever's in that bit of hay is driving them crazy. And this is really, really, really good hay. This is, um, probably... I'd say a quarter alfalfa mixed with grass. And um, I've said it before, I know uh, like first cutting hay seems to not be as desirable to some people, but these sheep, I watch them, they nip through the hay to grab the seeds. Like, so they don't mind grass that's gone to seed. And uh, you can see their condition isn't hurting. Look at this. She's got a big fat cap on her. Staying nice and warm. What do you think, 33? Yeah. So, it's very interesting because I kind of watched the dogs. They kept them all bundled into a little group together. And they are bonded to the sheep and not the cattle. They let the cattle, they kind of ignore the cattle. But they had the sheep all bundled up. And I, I watched the GPS activity from last night. And the two puppies stayed right on the flock and that adult dog was running laps and I think honestly that's a bit of uh, the breed difference 
Hey, George. Get away from my charger. Look at this. She just pulled my ground off. Look at that. What a troublemaker. You know to take the ground off, huh? Yeah, that's pretty clever. <sighs> Let me get my shepherd's crook right here. <sighs> we'll shoot you back. Come on. Come on, go get something to eat. Come on. Anyway, the breeds I selected for those puppies, because I just, I kind of got that adult dog as somebody was, I think, going out of business a bit. Uh, the breeds that I selected for those puppies are breeds that are more typical to stay, stay close in on a herd rather than being a patrolling one. And that, that a big dog is half Pyrenees, which I've had a Pyrenees before. They need a wide range and they like to range around and run the perimeter and do all of that and we're on two busy highways uh i just i just can't bring myself to have a dog that is more likely to walk away and get out in the road boy i'm out of breath turns out hauling hay by hand it's a real pain in the ass i might have to go redo another bail and roller i don't know we'll see but i gave them a little bit of hay you can see they already ate most of it and so i had to go inside uh quickly so my wife could run an errand so i want to come back out here and uh finish giving them what they they need for the day it's back to around zero now so that's kind of nice it's cold enough or warm enough now that I can sweat, but in case you're ever wondering why I try to come out at sunrise, maybe you can get an idea just from how bright it is out here. It's killing me. I am starting to turn the corner where winter is losing its majesty for me. <laughs> Probably because I know I got another three or four months of it, but... Um, the days are getting longer, but not fast enough for me. It's looks like we have a stretch of, no, I would call it normal weather, not too cold, not too warm coming. And some more snow on top of the foot we got the other, last week. We got more snow coming beginning of next week. And uh, it's just something we'll have to battle through. Yeah. Boy, these are nice looking sheep. I'm excited. They're all, you can just tell by the roundness and like, you see how this has all this fat right here? That's a sheep that's not struggling for food, which means that hopefully we'll get at least twins out of, I'd like to get twins out of all of them. I know I'll get a few singles and probably some triplets and I'll have to deal through with that. But last year, all my mothers that had triplets um, they were able to support three of them, even though they only have two teats, they were able to carry them through because they're born in the flush of, of spring, summer, when the grass is gr growing so fast, I can hardly keep up with it. And, uh, um, that's, that's just, uh, the right time to have lambs, I think, when there's so much food, the animals can't even eat it all. Uh, it's just amazing the condition these animals hold just on hay and granted this is like really nice nice hay but um see they just have their heads down and they're going hey sheep we're gonna call this sheep back over here i want to show you what they've left from their food so far it's a little bit but we'll see how far they clean it up tonight it's a, uh, golly, it's gotta be eh, almost sunset. You guys can see from the color of the sun. Dogs are doing a good job, but we're calling the sheep over. We're gonna see if we can give, get them to eat this up a little bit better. Something keeps knocking my ground wire off. Ah. So that's a bit irritating if one of them has figured that out.
let's make sure this is on. Yeah, it's on. Let's see if we can get them over here. Hey, sheep. We'll just, uh, see, I mean, this is nice hay. We just need to get them to get in here and eat it a little bit. Look at them. <laughs> it turned out to be a really peaceful day. Got a little warmer, it's about 10 degrees right now. So I'm able to run around without, stop jumping on me guys. I'm able to run around without too, too much clothing on or too many layers. The dogs are all in fine form. And uh, I think these these girls all got what they needed. So it's kind of a, a satisfying day. Well, there's the sheep all bundled up. And look at those two good dogs. Look at those two good dogs. Right up tight. When I rolled up, they were laying in with the sheep. As tight as you like. Bob, are you a good dog? Shep, are you a good dog? Yes. Look how big they are. I don't know where the adult is. She's a ranger. I was looking at my GPS last night. And just doing big old laps around this whole field. That's that's that Great Pyrenees in her, I think. <laughs> they uh, tend to patrol a little more, as I understand it. And uh, they tend to patrol a little more, as I understand it. And uh, I, I'm liking these, these breeds that I picked up. The Krakachin and the Marema. Because they just hug tight to the flock, which is really what I'd like in the long run. Yeah, they're good dogs. Look at this. The sheep all look calm. They're chewing their cud as we head into a beautiful sunrise. Look at that. Oh, nice. So I'm going to let this water go. <coughs> I've been metering out water more carefully to limit the amount that can freeze at the bottom um, just so I don't have to chop as much ice and that seems to be working you know there's a little bit of water left every day and it freezes and I chop it out but we're not it's not getting drained down to, the, to nothing if that makes sense but anyhow let's go feed some hay and get these animals moving I gotta put the uh, collars back on the pups I had to charge them up overnight so that was a bit of my gamble this time. All right. Boy, I do like coming out here at sunrise. Look at this. We got that. But then if we pan over, look at that. The moon's still out. What a beautiful place. Huh. Yeah, we're going to go feed some hay now. And uh, get these girls up and eating, warming up. It's, uh, as you can tell, anytime in Minnesota you see a clear sky like this, you know it's bitterly, bitterly cold. <laughs> it's probably in that, oh, I don't know, zero, negative five range somewhere in there. But 